Hey guys, my name is Francisco Hernandez and today I'm going to show you the off-camera flash setup that I use for whenever I travel, like this upcoming week, when I'm going to be traveling to Photo Plus. If you're wondering why I'm dressed up, it's because Halloween is close by and I don't think I'm going to make a video close enough to the date, so I might as well just dress up now so I at least have one Halloween themed video. I traveled quite a bit in the past couple of years and after all the travel that I did, I needed to figure out what kind of off-camera flash would be able to travel with me and give me the look that I needed without being too heavy in gear. So I finally figured out a solution that works best for me and hopefully for you. So that's why I wanted to go ahead and just make this video. All the gear that I'm gonna be showing you today fits inside one camera bag. It's the Peak Design 20L Charcoal Backpack. I've used this bag for more than maybe two years now and it's absolutely worth every penny even though it is a little bit on the pricey side at I believe 250. I wanted to go ahead and just show you guys the bag when it's filled to the brim with all the different gear that I put inside of it. So you guys can see exactly how it looks like. It's not pretty, but it gets the job done. It has everything that I need inside this bag. And it has, um, well, you guys are gonna see right now what exactly it has. On the side of the Peak Design 20L backpack, I have a battery bag, which is gonna hold a lot of AA batteries right here. You guys can see that I use the PowerX brand. And I also have two extra batteries for the Evolve 200 Pro, which is inside of here, also known as the Godox 8200 Pro. I actually can carry as many of these as I want inside of this carry-on bag because according to American Airlines, the uh, watt hour of the lithium ion batteries, if it's, as long as it's under 100, you can carry unlimited amounts of it. If it's between 100 to 160 watt hours, you can only carry two extra batteries. And if it's past 160 watt hours, then you need to contact them to see if you can actually take that battery. And if you're curious how many watt hours this has, it's 41.76. See, 41.76. So just to be a little bit clean, I'm gonna go ahead and just put the things that I've already gone over on the side. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this battery bag on the floor. On the other side of the pocket here of the Peak Design bag, I carry this little suitcase of a power charger. Uh, it's called Zendor. Uh, I believe, it, I'm not sure what the, the exact model is, but I think it's actually discontinued. So I guess there's no point in mentioning the brand, but it's, uh, it's actually full of life. It's actually the max that you can take with you on your bag. Like I mentioned before, whatever the watt hour of the device that you're gonna be bringing or the battery, it needs to be under a hundred. Uh, and this one I believe is 99.2 and it has a lot of juice. I've used it to charge my phones so many times and even my cameras. Uh, so yeah, I highly recommend getting a big battery charger like this or whatever you want to call it, power brick, juice, whatever the heck. Um, just get one of these because it's going to be very handy. So when it comes to this top section right here, I always put the Explore 400 Pro, also known as the Godox 8400 Pro, in this section because it's the most spacious room. So I always put it there and I also put a couple of other things in it as well. Among those extra accessories is the Evolve 200 Pro's bare bulb uh, attachment. This is something that's going to work great when I need to use it as a main light and want to fill in the modifier as best as I can without being too harsh like it would be if I used the Fresnel head, the speed light shaped head. This right here is actually something new that I'm going to start using. It's an infrared cut six stop ND filter that you can clip onto Sony full frame cameras. This is going to be helpful in case I want to use the Evolve 200 and not the Explore 400, but still get a good amount of power, a good amount of juice from the Evolve 200. I've done this before once, just once before, and I really, really liked it when I went to uh, the Sony Candle 3.0 trip. I actually made a video going over more about why I had to use, uh, not use high speed sync. So yeah, I wanted to have a backup just in case I ever can't use high speed sync or whenever I just wanna use as much light as I can from the Evolve 200. If you didn't know already, using high speed sync cuts down the power of the light that you're using as much as one stop, but actually maybe even more than that. So for example, if I was using the Explore 400 Pro in high speed sync, 400 watts cut down one stop would be around 200 watts. So in my theory here is if I use the Evolve 200 Pro without high speed sync, that's gonna be pretty much the same as if I use the Explore 400 Pro in high speed sync. So I wanna be able to experience that and I, I honestly felt like I experienced that when I went to Sony Kondo 3.0 and I took that photo. I'm gonna show you guys this photo on the screen right now. I took this photo without high speed sync because my transmitter was malfunctioning and I had to use an ND filter instead. And throughout this whole shoot, I felt like I was using the Explore 400 Pro and not the Evolve 200 Pro because I am so used to high speed sync and that power loss being there. So when I didn't feel it, it was just ab abnormal to me. 
So I want to go ahead and just use as much power as uh, my light has, which is going to be using ND filters. And this is going to be very, very convenient for me because you don't have to uh, have an ND filter for every lens, which is something that you would have to experience with ND filters. Of course, you can use one big ND filter and use step down and step up rings. But I honestly, think all of that is a hassle in itself. And I'd rather just use this because this is going to be the most convenient thing as it just clips onto the sensor. The very next thing I have is the R2 Pro transmitter for Sony. Of course, because I use Sony and you want to make sure that you have those little things that is protecting the hot shoe because that's very scratchy and I don't want to scratch anything that doesn't need to be scratched. So I'm going to go ahead and just put this aside and then bring out the Explore 400 Pro and the battery. I usually have them separate because it just fits better inside of the bag. But yeah, this is the Explore 400 Pro. This is the battery. I use this light whenever I travel because it's nice and strong and not as big as the Explore 600 Pro. But like I mentioned before, I've always used this light in high speed sync and I'm going to start to uh, use the Vault 200 Pro mainly now and without high speed sync and see how it handles. And I feel like it's going to get more juice from this setup right here from this light now that I'm not going to be using high speed sync as much or at least experimenting to see how that's going to work out. So, so far that was the top section of the bag right there. Now it's empty and I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the other sections, the middle and the bottom section. So now going on to the middle section, you guys can see, you might have seen it earlier. This is the Suray six section carbon fiber monopod. I use this one whenever I travel because it's light, it extends nice and long, and it also is not that expensive either. It's around hundred dollars. That is a little bit pricey, but it's honestly worth it because it's very light, very strong, and it gets very long. And also if you want to use this with a light, such as the Godox 8400 Pro, the Explore 400 Pro, or if you want to use it with the Godox S-Type bracket, you're going to need this little section here on top. It's actually something called a light spigot. I'll leave a link in the description area below. It's just like $5. And I've been using mine for maybe four to five years now. In the next section, the midsection here, I have my Sony A7R 4 I have it wrapped around in the Peak Design Slide Light uh, camera strap. I just find that it's, it's a getaway to kind of protect the camera from being scratched. So. Yeah, I have the A7R4 set up like that inside of the bag. Another thing that I have in this midsection is the Sigma Art 105 1.4. I'll show you guys real quickly how it looks like, like this, right there. And you might not be able to see the lens that's next to it, which is the Samyang 35 1.4. So here's the Sigma Art 105 1.4. It's a beast of a lens. And I also have the Samyang right next to it. It was kind of hiding like this next to the, next to the lens on the bottom there. So I have those lenses there. I actually would probably pack one more lens, the 55 1.8, the Zeiss 55 1.8, and it could probably fit also somewhere next to the Sigma Art 105 1.4, just because of how big and spacious that lens is. It has little sections on the bottom for those mini lenses. And in this last section, I have my backup light or my rim light in case I want to use a two light setup. I have the, uh, the Evolve 200 Pro also known as the Godox 8200 Pro. I have it with the round head attachment. I love this round head attachment because it has a nice and bright modding lamp, which is very important to me whenever I do night shoots. And I pretty much just want to use it as a continuous light source. I've done that in my last video where I show you guys how I took pictures at the state fair. And the very next thing next to that is a 24 by 24 inch foldable softbox. If you guys have seen any of my behind my building the shot videos, you would know that this is my absolute favorite thing to travel with my favorite modifier to travel with because it fits nice and small like this and it fits it, it folds out nice and big. So I'm going to show you um, one quick thing. This is a, a hair tie, a, kind of a big hair tie and I use it just, just to kind of wrap around and keep this softbox in place. Otherwise it kind of folds out slowly like it's doing right now, but I'm going to go ahead and just show you guys exactly how big it gets. This is still not folded out as much as it's supposed to. So now it's folded out as big as it can get. And I actually really prefer this size because although I typically thought before that, you know, I would have to get a bigger modifier, something larger than 24 by 24 inches for nice soft light. This does a great job, a very, very great job. I've used it a lot whenever I traveled and it gave me nice, great photos. And the great thing about this modifier is it's very, very cheap. I want to say it's $20 on its own, or you can get it with a bracket, which is maybe $30 to $32. Or 
or you can get it with a Bowens mount, which is actually how I got mine, because if you want to use these, something like the Explore 400 Pro or something else that has a Bowens mount, you're going to need to buy the one, uh, the softbox with that Bowens mount combo so that you can attach the Bowens mount onto the light that you're going to use and then fold the softbox end around it. So I'll show you guys that in a second. So this is the mount that I was talking about. This is something that's going to go ahead on that, that light that you're going to use, that Bowens mount light that you're going to use. And then the softbox here is going to go ahead and be able to attach onto the Bowens mount. And then now I can go ahead and just mount this softbox onto a Bowens mount light. And again, this is something that you need, that Bowens mount is something that you need in order to use this softbox with Bowens mount strokes. So now that I've gone over everything, I'm gonna go ahead and just give a quick recap, not verbally, but um, listing it on the screen so you guys can see exactly what's inside of this bag. It's quite a bit of stuff. It's basically a one light setup and a rim light. But one thing that you might notice that's missing from this setup is that I don't have any stands. So you will have to have somebody assist you or what I would recommend if you have nobody to assist you is you go ahead and invest in some sort of nano stands. There's the Manfrotto nano stand and there's a, uh, a cheaper version of that stand that I also have, I actually have both. So I'll go ahead and leave a link to those in the description area below so you guys can check those out. Those are something that I would pack inside of my checked bag. And I would also recommend that you, um, just to kind of save space inside of the bag, or the Peak Design 20L bag, I would go ahead and get that Bowens mount that I showed you guys earlier, this one here. I would go ahead and just pack this as well inside of the checked bag because that's something that doesn't necessarily need to be inside of the Peak Design carry-on bag. Actually, now that I think about it, the Subray monopod, this one here, it also doesn't need to be inside of the checked bag or the carry-on bag, the Peak Design bag, but I do have it in there because I wanted to see if it fits inside there for whenever I need to go ahead and not just go ahead and just rest inside of the hotel, but have that set up with me in my bag for whenever I'm gonna go on location and shoot wherever I travel to. In case you're curious about how this setup looks like set up, I have that right now. I have the Evolve or the Explore 400 Pro with the 24 by 24 inch softbox with that Bowens mount right there that allows you it to connect to each other. And I have the Suray monopod right here. And I actually have this set up on the wrong side, but who cares? Uh, this is how it looks like. And then you would have somebody uh, or that nano stand that you might've gotten on the rim light to provide some sort of separation between you and the background or the subject in the background. So I wanted to show you guys just real quickly how this setup would look like. Um, I'm using the continuous mounting lamps on these lights, but you guys can get a good preview of the type of setup that would occur with this setup. So yeah, that's pretty much it. So that's pretty much all the stuff that I bring with me whenever I travel. It's good for a nice one light, set, actually two light off camera flash setup and all the variation and the lenses and different things inside of that. But of course it is gonna vary depending on what you're gonna need and what you're gonna bring with you or what you have. So sometimes I will not bring this Sigma Art 105 1.4 and instead if I need to be absolutely light, I'll use the Sony FE 85 1.8 instead. Actually, before you go, one thing I forgot to mention is if you wanna use the Vault 200 Pro with Bones type modifiers, you're gonna to need to use the Godox S type bracket and that's something that I didn't show you guys inside of this bag because it's actually something I would recommend you put inside your check bag as well as chargers for the Evolve 200 Pro, the Godox 8400 Pro or whatever light you're gonna bring with you. Okay, so now I'm done. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it helps you guys figure out what you're gonna bring with you whenever you travel. I'm gonna go ahead and end this video with some footage of the gear that I showed you today or different variations of that gear so you guys can actually see I actually use what I recommended to you today whenever I travel. Um, yeah, hope you guys have a good Halloween and uh, let me know what your favorite house is in the comment section below and we'll have a voting battle to see which one it is and of course it's going to be Slytherin. But yeah, take care guys.